Upgrades. Most people, I'd imagine, are on a combination of 10, 11, and version 12. And I say that fairly flippantly, that most people are on 10, 11, and 12. I think the, the stark reality is not many people are running Oracle 10 anymore. A reasonable chunk of people are running Oracle 12 and the vast majority of people, especially those people who run their databases with some caution in terms of upgrade frequency, are all running on 11.204. And that's great. 11.204 is a fantastic release. I used it for a long time at the various customers I worked on before John Oracle. It's pretty much rock solid. Obviously, we would prefer people to upgrade and stay current, but the reality is we know that a lot of people are on 11.204. So let's talk about some announcements that came out of Open World and also to clarify a few things in terms of where you need to go because there is a time bomb ticking because 11.20 support is coming to an end. In fact, it may have even finished by the time this comes out onto YouTube. So here is a graph that maybe you've already seen, hopefully you've seen many, many times, but if not, we're going to cover it again. You can see 11.204, we've extended and extended and extended and extended. You can even pay to extend it even longer into 2020, as you can see there. 12.102 has a similar form of extended support to go a little bit further. But here's the thing that tends to confuse people. 12.201 and 18C, which have obviously come out later than 11.2 and 12.1, have fairly short periods of support. And that is because our driving release for long-term support is 19C. And you can see there from the graph that 19C will be supported many, many years into the future. Now, every time I put this slide up, people don't look at the bars. They just, they just look at the numbers and go, my goodness, 11, 12, 12.2, 12 18, 19, etc. And everyone freaks out. Ever since you introduced this annual release model, people are like absolutely losing their marbles going, you cannot expect me as a DBA to be upgrading all my databases every single year. And this is true. We're not. Just because we have an 18 and a 19 and a 20, and yes, there will be a 21 and a 22, we will not be asking you to upgrade every year. What we're trying to do is actually satisfy the needs of all customers. And in my view, there are two camps of that customers sit in. Customer camp number one is this. I have a database. I store stuff in it. I read stuff from it. I have applications that run on it. I need to make sure this thing is really secure, which means I need patches, security patches in particular. But other than that, don't bug me. I don't need to upgrade it. I'm not using the latest and greatest technology. You know, it's a fantastic product. So why do I need to upgrade all the time? I'd rather not. And this is the objective here. We can satisfy this need. If you're running 11.2, you've been able to run 11.2 now for just about a decade. What we're saying now is the database you want to jump to from 11.2 is not 12. It's not 12.2. It's not 18. It's 19. 19 is the one you would jump to. That's the one that has this huge long-term support. Internally, 19C is actually our last generation of the 12C architecture. So we had 12.1, 12.2, 12.202 was 18C, 12.203 is 19C. It's the last generation of 12. That's the one we're going to give the longest support to. So you can see that on the slide, I've said you get four years of premier support. So up to 2023 and then extend the support to 2026. Since 19C obviously came out in, huh, guess what, 2019, that's about eight years. And if it follows the 11.2 cycle, you might even be able to eke out maybe a couple more years after that. So this gives customers that are reticent of doing regular upgrades that they're getting these, you know, literally 10 year life cycles. You know, name me any other product that gives you 10 years on a particular version. Man, every time I log on, my Windows PC says, hey, guess what? You've got another upgrade. You know, don't log off. We're conscious of the fact that customers do like that ability to be very, very stable and not have to upgrade unless they absolutely desperately need to. I stress again, if you're on 11, 19C is the one you wouldn't want to be jumping to. In particular, if you stay on 11, once it drops out of all these extended supports, it's going to run still fine, just fine. The biggest issue is security patches. And as I said at Open World at one of my talks, you could have a huge outage nowadays. You could lose all your hardware. You could lose all your networking. You could you know, delete all your databases. People will forgive you for that. People will forgive you for huge outages nowadays. You know, I see outages on the news all the time about my, you know, my airline went down. I couldn't book the other day. Didn't matter. I'm still going to use that airline. 
But if you get hacked, if you have a security breach on your database, that is going to kill you nowadays. That puts your companies out of business. So security patches are probably the most critical thing that you can have on an Oracle database. And that's why it's important that if you're on 11, you get onto 19 because that's where the security patches are going to keep coming out. They're going to dry up on those older releases. Cannot stress it enough. Back to this slide again, you can see 19C is the long-term release and it's going to be supported longer than 20. That's the thing I want to stress here. Longer than 20. 20 will come out and it will come and go and 19C will still have a longer release cycle. So I want to stress that. 20C, I would imagine, will come out, you know, hopefully um, early 2020. Please don't quote me on that. I have no privy to that, but I would imagine it will come out sooner rather than later. One of the nice things that's come out is because we realize that 19C is this target version, which so many customers are going to be wanting to move to. We are giving you direct upgrade path from all the currently supported versions straight into 19C. One of the cool things about Oracle Open World was probably the most popular talks that were in terms of attendance were almost all the upgrade style talks. So obviously it's a hot topic and Mike Dietrich and Roy Swanger did a fantastic job at Open World talking about these things. But yeah, so if you're on 11.204, 12.102, 12.2 and 18, they all have a direct upgrade path to 19C. And if you haven't seen it, the way we do upgrades now is dramatically simplified. We now have this thing called auto upgrade, which really is trying to automate and simplify the vast majority of manual things we used to do. We used to get the upgrade manual out and it would have, you know, chapters one to five, you know, this is your prereq number one, prereq number two, and all this list. And you sort of, it was a great document. You'd go through it top to bottom and then you'd finally upgrade. The auto upgrade facility is trying to simplify a lot of that part of that task to doing all that for you. And at the end of it, sort of giving you a nice concise, here's where we're at, what do you want to do? We're good to upgrade, let's go. So auto upgrade, search for that. Go to Mike Dietrich's web pages for information on that. But auto upgrade is going to let you upgrade from all of these older releases straight into 19C for that long-term support. Hopefully, I'm helping convince you that if you are a DBA that is in one of those environments where you don't want to upgrade often, you're catered for. Any version currently to 19C, and then you can sit there for nearly a decade. That's pretty cool. There are other types of customers. They are looking for particular feature sets. A feature comes out in version X of the database, and that's the one that they need because that's going to give them a competitive advantage in some way. It meets some particular need that they're really, really striving for. And for those people, that's why we went to annual releases because it gives a smaller feature set per release. We can much more rapidly deliver stuff. So yes, they could be on 11 now, but they can go to 12, 18, 19. If there's a feature in 20, they can jump to that, 21, etc. As you can see there from the slide, our estimated kind of mix and match here using sort of a TikTok um, kind of mechanism is about every three releases will be these big long-term releases, 19, 22, 25, et cetera. We obviously reserve the right to change that, but that's roughly where our line of thinking is. So those people who are looking for really, really cool features that are gonna really transform their business in 20 or 21, will have the opportunity to leap to those new feature sets. Those people who are, you know, as I said, the more stability-based ones, fine, they can stay on 19 and jump to 22 in the same way they'll jump from 11 to 19. But we're offering mix and match. Now, I said customer types. I'll be a bit more granular just to, to help hopefully uh, explain this better. It doesn't have to be a customer type. It can actually be a database type. And I'll give you a real example. I worked at a customer not too long ago where their data warehouse went through this upgrade cycle. They were on 11. We went to 12.1. And in particular, the reason we went to 12.1 is because we wanted to get access to some of the online operations for moving large amounts of data around because it was a data warehouse. Then to 12.102, because that gave us in-memory option, which was something that was very keen. And then to 12.2, and all those things, one of the big drivers was the pattern matching SQL clause. This was a data warehouse. This was an organization that needed to do fraud analysis for customer transactions. And the pattern matching clause, that SQL statement that came in in 12, was literally the greatest driver for them to upgrade. That was the, the real trigger point. They said, yep, we're out of 11. We're going on to 12. And they've rolled through the 12 cycle. For one particular database in their organization, they're the second type of customer. 
aggressive upgrade cycles because they want to aggressively get new features because they've been waiting on them. But on their same, in the same customer site, one of their other databases, one of their transactional databases, you know, is a fairly, I hate to use the term unsophisticated, let's call it simple, simple application of it's very strongly just transactionally based. Yeah, they were, they're on 11.2. Then they went to 12.1 because they didn't want to pay for external support in 11.204. They went to 12.1, but they haven't gone to 12.2 and they haven't gone to 18 because the features available, the vast majority of features in those two releases aren't particularly applicable to them. Anyone that's been to my new features talks knows there's a bundle of goodies in 12, 2 and 18, but they weren't pertaining to this particular database for this particular customer. So they are still currently on 12, 1 and they're planning on moving to 19C in the new year. Inside one particular database customer, you can actually have these mix and match variations. I think it's, you know, it's good that we have the best of both worlds. The key thing I'm trying to, I suppose, suggest here is the fact that because we do have the annual release cycle and the extended support mechanism now, you get choice. And, and I hope you embrace that. You can choose on a database by database basis what style of upgrades you would like to do.